Hi, I'm Amy Collier, Senior Cloud Advocate at Microsoft, here to talk about LightBit Storage with Felix Melligan, Principal Solutions Engineer. And I'd like to thank you for joining me, Felix. Hey, thanks for inviting me, Amy. I'm really excited to be talking to you today. Yeah, what is this LightBit Storage I'm hearing about all of a sudden? Yeah, so effectively LightBits is software-defined storage that lives in Azure on top of L series VM. So it could be LSV3 or LASV3 instances. Mm -hmm. We kind of take those instances and the underlying NVMe storage and we create a cluster, then we carve out volumes to present to clients. So what this means for customers is they end up with like a SAN in the cloud. So they get very high performance, low latency storage that they can present to their applications in Azure, whether it be on Azure VMs or AKS or even uh, Azure VMware solution as well. So it's fully certified on AVS today. Oh, great. So you kind of already touched like how it's deployed in Azure. Is there more to it? It sounds like it runs on the L series VMs. Yeah, so how you deploy this is actually really easy. And we have plenty of documentation if you want to follow through. And we've got some deployment videos as well if you want to see it in action. So what we do is we go to the Azure Marketplace because we're in the Azure Marketplace today. You subscribe to the offering. We love the Azure Marketplace. <laughs> and then we deploy a LightBits cluster based on some inputs, some really simple inputs, things like you, know, you name the cluster, you decide on a capacity, and that will be the size of the L series instances, which because the, the storage for the L series instances is coupled with the instance size, that will dictate the size of the cluster and the performance. Mm -hmm. And then we deploy it inside a managed resource group with some automation in the background. So Lightbits as a company can manage the cluster for you. So you don't have to worry about the maintenance of nodes or replacing any failed nodes or, or maintaining nodes or reboots or anything like that. We'll do that for you. So it's okay. really hands off as a, uh, a platform and then you just have to worry about carving out volumes and presenting to applications. And obviously, they're all very high performance and low latency, as I mentioned before. So um, that's what you have to be concerned about after deployment. That I mean, it sounds great that you manage it, but can I manage it if I wanted to, if I want to tweak anything? or? Yeah, you definitely can. So okay. we have two options. And they both get deployed in the same way. So both from the marketplace. They both live within your subscription, within okay. your VNets optionally as well. So we can either create a new VNet, we can do VNet peering, or we can deploy within your VNets themselves. And that means that the storage gets very close to the applications. And that's how we achieve that very high performance. But like you asked, so we can manage it as a managed application and we can have access to the instances and we can troubleshoot and maintain the cluster and upgrade the cluster for you as well really hands-off kind of model hey i just want the storage mm -hmm. i just want you to manage the infrastructure all the way to hey i know lightbits i've been using lightbits on on prem or in azure already and i know how lightbits works and how it's deployed and i have some core automation in place already that deals with maybe a node replacement or updates, and I've integrated it into my current automation workflows. We have customers mm -hmm. that do that, so you can certainly manage it yourself. That's great to have both options, because I mean, honestly, I would go auto-managed and <laughs> worry about some other stuff, so that's great. Yeah, um, we, we kind of wanted it to be, you know, flexible in the deployment models. You know, some of the yeah. our larger customers, they're really into their tweaks and tunes and they understand how the platform works enough to be able to tune it and so mm -hmm. sometimes they just deploy it directly onto the vms themselves and they don't want oh, wow. all the automation and management and the azure functions that we employ in the background to manage the cluster so it's pretty flexible depending on how deep you are into the technology and how much control you want over the cluster right that's great you can geek out or let it be Sounds good to I'm me. a geek. I would, I, <laughs> I would, I would, you know, do do a bit of both worlds, right? So yeah. I would manually deploy and then build my own automation to do some yeah. stuff that we that we can do as a cluster. But the devs work really, really hard, and we have a really nice platform with most of the automation you'd need today. Things like auto healing, auto scaling, it's all implemented in the product, oh, so you don't have to worry great. about any of that. That's great. So I, you mentioned VNet. So is that how would it communicate with the Azure VMware solution? Really great question. So even though we work with you know just Azure VMs running Linux and soon to be mm -hmm. Windows, oh, we nice. love that announcement Ignite this year. Yeah. Um, we also work with AKS, but with AVS, the AVS deployment is kind of unique. And if you're familiar with Azure VMware solution, 
Mm-hmm. And when you deploy the SDDC, the software defined data center, you end up with two networks. You have a back end network and a front end network. And the back end network is mm-hmm. used for things like vMotioning. And you can connect an express route into that back end network. And then you connect that express route the other side to the vNet that could be a shared vNet. It could be a vNet with peering in other places. And that's how we communicate with ABS. So we use this back end network not the vm segment network that the clients use to communicate but the back end right. network exactly that's a key yeah, thing that would be bad. <laughs> yeah you don't you don't want to you don't want to take away from any performance that the clients might have between applications or even to your end mm. users so we use that back end network which is a really cool thing that we can do after partnering yeah. partnering with with azure for for the last couple of years so we're really excited about that um that's great yep the, the other thing to mention is when you deploy like bits today when you go mm-hmm. through the, the different screens of the deployment, there's actually a full screen which says, hey, check this box and Lightbits will automatically create that express route connectivity for you. Oh, wow. um, we'll register, we'll grab your key, and then we'll, so when you deploy the Lightbits managed application, you're already connected to AVS and you can start mm-hmm. uh, communicating with AVS directly from Lightbits and do you know some slight configuration and then you're good to go to deploy data stores. That's that's amazing. I didn't know that about the express route and everything. Let's talk about the availability of the data stores. You know, we're mm-hmm. customers, we need that resiliency. We're talking about that all the time. How does Lightbits ensure availability to the clusters? Great question. So the way that Lightbits passes data stores to ABS and ESXi is when we create a volume on a Lightbits cluster, it will be visible as a device on ESXi. So if you're deep in your VMware, you'll know what I mean. Now that device or volume from a Lightbits perspective is synchronously replicated to uh, either two or three partner nodes on the Lightbits cluster. So when you create a volume or a data store in ABS, you can be assured that there's either two or three replicas, depending on what you choose and you configure across the cluster of Lightbits. Now that cluster can be single zone or it can be multi-zone as well. So you can deploy your Metro cluster of VMware, and you can also mm-hmm. have a Lightbits cluster that's split between three zones too. So we can mirror the deployment that you have with ABS. That's amazing. That's great. Um, then, okay, what about, so can you like create snapshots, like the usual stuff too? Yeah, so aside from being extreme high performance block storage that we present to AVS, mm. and I will shoehorn in there, we are the only NVMe TCP certified storage on Azure 2. <laughs> uh, we work with nice. VMware and Azure to get that done. We can nice. also do things like create snapshots for the data store. We can clone mm. those snapshots and present them as a new data store to AVS. We have QoS policies at the data store level that you can implement as well as the VMDK level. So there's plenty of features in there aside from just having highly available, high performance storage too. Right. Okay. And then how about a performance with a Lightbits cluster, you know, like latency wise, what's expected? So with a Lightbits data store, it will change depending on the size of the L series instance, but you're talking mm-hmm. about hundreds of thousands of IOPS to a single data store, but you're also talking about sub millisecond tail latency as well. So We'd expect the average latency of a volume to be well below half a millisecond. And then even the tail, the 99% tail latency to be below a millisecond. So that's how that's the kind of performance you can get out of a Lightbits cluster. We're talking hundreds of thousands to millions of IOPS out of a mm-hmm. single Lightbits cluster. And then all of that at sub millisecond latency at the tail. If you need oh, more wow. performance, you can just add nodes to the cluster. So you can start mm-hmm. off with a relatively small Lightbits cluster. Maybe you want to use the L32s to start off with and have a three node cluster. I don't need that much capacity. I just want to add more capacity to my current ESXi. And then you can scale that cluster up to 16 nodes. And we can go even to the L80s instances too. So you can have 16 L80 instances deployed on the Lightbit side or augmenting the storage that you get from the SDBC. Oh, wow. That's huge <laughs> yeah it's um, really big and yeah. obviously when you start adding nodes the, the latency doesn't change so you add right. more iops with every node but mm. the latency stays exactly the same we still expect that sub millisecond tail latency and the sub okay. half millisecond average latency all right this sounds great but 
it has to come up with a price tag. I mean, that's all it does. You know, effectively, the the light bid pricing is freely available in the marketplace. You can see what we charge in a kind of pay as you go model. Mm -hmm. The other side of the licensing is the L series instances. So effectively, because everything's deployed in your own subscription, you can see all the pricing. And oh. if you get any cool discounts from Azure, they will be applied to the Lightbits cluster too. So oh. if you get a discount on uh, L series per core, that will be applied to Lightbits cluster. But okay. the key message here is that Lightbits is 40% lower cost than adding the equivalent vSAN by adding a new uh, ESXi host. So right. Lightbits is cheaper as a solution versus mm -hmm. adding more nodes to the ABS cluster. Because right. ultimately, if you need more storage and you don't need the compute, you don't want to have to pay more for storage than you would if you got storage and compute. So we fit right. into that pricing model where we've become cheaper than adding a new node, but we're also mm -hmm. very high performance, just like vSANs. That's great. So yeah, why add a host if you just need storage? Um, That's exactly it. So can you use reserved instances for Lightbits then? Yeah, you certainly can. So okay. you can you can do you know your page you go. You can do your one year reserved or your three year reserved instances, and that okay. again will bring the price of the Lightbits cluster down because in the end they are just L series instances that are living in your subscription. So you can mm -hmm. consider them just like compute instances that happen to have Lightbits running on top of them uh, as nice. a storage platform. Okay, so yeah, it's a managed service in a cluster in a resource group. With running VMs with the software. And um, I think you briefly touched what other use cases or features can customers use with Lightbits? So in the end, because we work uh, across TCP IP networking, which is what mm -hmm. VNet is based on, uh, Lightbits can be a shared cluster, not just between ABS or multiple ABS SDDCs, because we can do that. Mm -hmm. We can have a single Lightbits cluster that present state stores to multiple ABS SDDCs. But you can also mm -hmm. use the same or a different Lightbits cluster if you want to, to present data to AKS for your containerized workloads, right. or you can present data to Azure VMs. And we're actually one of the recommended solutions for running Oracle on Azure infrastructure as well. So we're the highest performance solution uh, that's recommended in the Azure documentation for running Oracle. So if you need any other high performance, maybe transactional workloads and you're running them in Azure and you need that kind of extreme performance and low latency that you can get with Lightbits up to the millions of IOPS at that sub millisecond tail, we can be your block storage for those kind of workloads as well. That's great. Yeah, Oracle, definitely. <laughs> That's a big Yeah, <laughs> Oracle's a big one. Obviously, we now have Exadata in Azure as well, which is an awesome solution. But mm -hmm. a lot of customers tend to want to self-manage their Oracle, and they've been tw they've been tuning and tweaking their Oracle for years and years on prem, <laughs> yeah. and so they want to continue that in the cloud. And so they like to use Azure infrastructure and the VMs that Azure can provide in order to run mm -hmm. Oracle. Like the E series VMs are incredibly powerful machines, perfectly right. capable of running really really performant Oracle databases. And then we come in and we can provide that high performance block storage, like you would have done on prem as well. Nice. Well, I'm really disappointed you didn't have like white papers and tons of oh. slides to go through. <laughs> <laughs> if people want that, where would they go for, I know you have a great demo series out there on YouTube and we'll link to that below, but um, where can people find more information about Lightbits and AVS? So you can go to the Lightbits website. So www.lightbitslabs.com. Uh, and we have a whole page on Azure, and we'll have a whole page on ABS coming extremely soon. But if you scroll to the bottom of the resources section of the Lightbits web page, you'll see Azure as a use case, you'll see Oracle as a use case, and you will see Azure VMware solution as a use case. We have white papers, we have blogs. Thanks for pitching my demo series that I recently <laughs> produced as well. So you no can go problem. watch that. And then you can also uh, access our publicly available documentation as well, which is linked from the Lightbits website. It's documentation.lightbitslabs.com. And there we give you all the information you need about how to deploy a Lightbits cluster, how to integrate a Lightbits cluster with ABS. So it's all there and it's freely available. So you can just, if you're a reader, you can read. And if you're a watcher, <laughs> you can watch the videos as well. Yeah, I highly, I, they're great videos. I really enjoyed them. And I like that they're broken up into chapters. So you don't have to watch a whole hour's worth. You can just start off and 
pick back up where you left off too so it saves my voice Great. as well because then i don't have to talk for the whole time <laughs> yeah, there you go. For, the, for the whole <laughs> right. 30 minutes i can do them in little chunks and then i can right. produce that way otherwise i'd have no voice <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining me, Felix. This was great. It's great to have another option for storage, especially for Azure VMware solutions since I work on that. But I know other users will love it for just Azure VMs or Oracle or AKS. And I'm, I'm thankful for you taking the time to talk to me today. No, it was great talking to you, Amy. I really appreciate you inviting me in today. And thank you so much for all the great questions. And I look forward to working with you a lot more and uh, yeah, working sure. together on the light bits and ABS integration. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Thank you.